Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome back to Passions Podcast, the podcast where we talk about the soap opera passions. I am your regular host, Latara, back today with Jessica. Welcome, Jessica. I'm very happy to be back. We are happy to have you back. Um, <laughs> it, we I had so much fun with you the last time we t- uh, yeah, talked you're... about the show. Yeah, you crack me up, so it's easy to do. So I'm I'm glad to have you back and for us to chit chat some about the show. The, this week was stupid. It was such a stupid, stupid week. It was one of those weeks that makes you go, "Why do I watch this show? Yeah, what am I doing? <laughs> so much time. What is it that I like about this? Because." Even the people that I tend to really like enjoy, yeah, specifically we're Teresa, were driving me crazy this week. Okay, yeah, she definitely, yeah, okay, and she, like she was so freaked out the whole time, and and multiple times people said, "I've never seen her this freaked out," and it's like, yes, you have, you have, yeah, we've seen her freaked out pretty much the entire run of the series, and there's so much about. What, how freaked out she is and why she's freaked out that is so dumb to me and like I get it we're actually we're gonna jump into that portion of the show immediately today because it's right. like the main thing I want to talk yeah. about get it off your chest yeah I need to get it off of my chest but before we do that I want to give a quick shout out to all of the patrons over on Patreon thank you to Muna Shea, Brie Lynn, Lisa, Sid, Serana, Randall, Hannah, Camelia, Samantha, Jeanette, Eric, Fantasia, Sean, S, Larissa, Maria, Greg, Lopez, Fitzgerald, Lisa, Jessica, Laura, Karen, Uche, oh. Paige, Casey, Garage, Tom, Pablo, Daisy, Shane, Kelly, and finally, last but certainly not least, Taylor Harris Crane. Uh, they, I know, right? Don't you love the name? Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> Thank you all for being patrons and hanging in there with me. And I know I say it every week, but I do this show for you. So love ya. Making a heart for you on the screen if you're not watching and only listening. All right. So we're going to jump right in here to episodes 721 through 725. Yes? Yes. Okay. Thank the Lord. All right. (laughs) So... Which, speaking of, Teresa this week is like, what has God ever done for me? <laughs> yeah, I loved actually that whole, she was right. I mean, she, she was, she kinda she was. had yeah. good points, yeah. Yeah, she kind of mm-hmm. was, but it was just so funny because she was just so off the rails at that point. Because, girl, what are you doing? Yes. So, like, why are you at Father, why are you at the church talking to Father right. Ron again, telling blaspheming? No, he's the worst person, face. actually. Yeah, blaspheming in his face hoping yep. that he's going Yelling to co-sign like, your bullshit like yeah. it's crazy mm-hmm. so let's talk about it we're not there yet all right so we pick up this week and there's a man a mysterious man who has come to the crane mansion looking for mrs crane mm-hmm. Teresa goes to the door she's the one who answers the door and and he asks for mrs crane and she's like well i'm mrs crane right and he says, well, I'm looking for the former Mrs. Crane, Ethan's mother. And she's like, well, I'm the only Mrs. Crane here. So you're going to need to hand over that tape. He, she says, anything on that tape is mine because it says Mrs. Crane. So it's for me. Yeah. I, the logic doesn't stand, but this man was hired by Rebecca. He was hired to do that. Exactly what happened. Yeah. To, they, to do they knew She would do it, I guess, even though it makes no sense. Rebecca. <laughs> Rebecca like knows Teresa better than Teresa knows herself. Yeah, I love Rebecca a little bit. Like it, I don't like her, but I also think um she's hilarious with her like machinations and stuff. <laughs> she's great. And she, I mean, she does know she, she clearly does. I mean, she was written to nail it perfectly. Exactly everything she said Teresa would do, she does. Yeah, and she yeah. she's not wrong. She she knows Teresa better than she knows than Teresa knows herself. So, yeah. um this man of course gives her the tape because that's what he's supposed to do. Right. And uh Rebecca and Ivy are kind of standing to the lurking. side a little bit, yeah. lurking, yeah, to where Teresa can't see them. Yes. Um and they're just so delighted at how well the plan is working out, especially Rebecca. Yeah. Ivy, throughout these episodes, Ivy's still on the fence about this plan because Rebecca has not told her all the parts of the plan. And if I 
were Ivy, considering yeah. my background with Rebecca, I would not have agreed to anything until she told me everything. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And Ivy is definitely the nervous one. And Rebecca is completely sure that everything is going to go well. And then Ivy's like, we could get arrested. This is sketchy. I don't know. She has that vibe about her more. Yeah. Well, also, if this goes wrong, if this plan goes wrong, Rebecca, Rebecca doesn't have as much to lose as Ivy does. That's so true. She, and, and I think she planned it that way. And she has, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think right. she planned it that way. Yeah, Ivy's like off her game for sure. She is. Yeah. So um, she she takes the box and a reminder to everyone, what is in the box? It is a tape that has been altered and doctored by Rebecca's like henchmen to look like Ethan shot Julian. It is just black and white footage of that uh, episode where Julian fell into the tune of that. Yeah. But, but with the added bonus of us being able to see Ethan sure. shooting, yes. right? It's ridiculous. I don't, yeah, yeah. So, but it's, it's fake, it's not a real. Do that. Like the close-ups of Julian and stuff and just like the drama work, it was like, wow, what a great video that is. I'm yeah, it's suppo That's shockingly supposedly good. Supposedly it's security footage. I was like, I've never <laughs> seen such nice security okay. footage in my yeah. life. Okay. <laughs> um, so anyway, she gets this box, this tape. They're excited that she's fallen for their plan. Um, but they realize that Whitney is also there with Teresa and, right. uh, are worried that Whitney will see the tape because if Whitney sees the tape, the plan is ruined. Right. Oh, this plan is so flimsy because right. I mean, like it's good and it's bad. Like it works for them because everybody in this show. So it dumb. Work. yeah, yeah. But there's so many there's so many moments where this could go horribly wrong and if one of the reason if if your plan will fall apart if even one other person other than Teresa sees this tape right maybe it's not a very good plan and they're giving her the tape to go out into the wild with so it's like so many variables that could screw that up but they're like it's gonna work and it's like okay well it does so that's great yep so when they realize that uh, Whitney is with Teresa, Rebecca runs into the library because Teresa has taken Whitney back to the library so they can watch this tape, right? Yeah. Rebecca runs in and like yells, stop, you can't watch that tape. Oh my God. <laughs> and uh, Teresa's like, why? What's on this tape? Why don't you want me to see what's on the tape? And then she she like brings Ivy in and she's like, Ivy's in excruciating pain. And then she like punches, like pinches her. She so visibly her is like pinching her and hurting her. And it's like, she should be able to act without the actual pain. But I guess that's what indicates, like that's how it's she knew just, what was going on. So. And it's just an excuse for Rebecca to hurt Ivy, right? right. I didn't even think of that for some reason. You're right. It is obviously. It's, it's just an excuse for her to get a couple of licks in. Yes, um, and so Ivy starts to put on this performance. Oh, I'm in excruciating pain. Oh, it hurts so bad. Whitney, go and find your mother so she can refill my prescription. And Whitney is like, "Can't you? Can't one of you just call her?" Yes. <laughs> and and um, Ivy yells at her, bears her teeth, is like, "No!" Like growls at her. Okay, you have to do it. No, get out of the room. It's yeah. Scary. Well, and so Whitney falls for that, goes for this, which yeah. the way Ivy, Ivy was being so nasty to her. Like she had a horrible attitude. Like I know, yeah. even if Ivy was truly in pain, that right. does, you don't get to yell at me and scream at me. I, it's not right. my fault. You got up on that stupid lighthouse thing and fell off and broke your back. Also, no one goes through a doctor's like kids to get to the doctor so it's like call your doctor like i don't yeah. know but whitney but it worked she it made her go there her and um, actually not Teresa, but whitney is kind of easy to like steer in whatever direction so she does leave yeah so she does leave she's like okay i'm gonna go call my mom i guess which <laughs> i want to also say eve never shows up yeah. no <laughs> like, you're right no she doesn't eve nothing we and Whitney comes back so it's like she did make the call and then we see Eve later you're right and she didn't get any call and she's not planning on moving so 
And yeah. I think, I wonder if the writers did that on purpose. Like, fuck that bitch. I'm not coming to give her <laughs> any medicine. That but or like Whitney like... just pretended to go and was like, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll do that. Cause you, you, you psycho. And then she just like walked out, went to the bathroom, came back. Yeah. Cause uh, I felt like if she had actually called her mom, her mom would be like, you need to get the hell out of that house. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And she would be there quick because she's all freaked out about the whole situation with her daughters being involved too. Yeah. But they didn't write it that way. And honestly, I think they just forgot about that. I do too. I, that's us like writing for them. I don't think, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, I think they just forgot about it. <laughs> Cause when he shows up much, much later, it comes back much, right. much later. Anyway, yeah. so yeah. after Whitney leaves, Teresa yeah. is about to watch his tape, but she constantly is getting interrupted. First Phyllis right. comes in, my favorite ever made. <laughs> I love Phyllis. I just <laughs> love her, I, okay. you know? She makes her time on screen count every time. All right. Yeah. Phyllis and is all right. She's all right. Phyllis is all right. Yeah. I, I don't love, love her. her. I don't love her, but I, I understand. I love her so far. I don't know. Does she do stuff later? No, no, no. You just I, don't like I think I'm being contrary, and I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's okay. Okay. So Phyllis comes in, she interrupts to do some like cleaning or whatever. Then Ethan comes in, like he's gonna find, some, he's like, I left something in here, whatever. Eventually, um, she watches the tape because yeah, yeah there's a lot of nonsense, but eventually she watches a long the tape. time and yeah, she does get to it. Yeah, she sees it. And of course she immediately believes what she sees. She's like, yeah. oh my God, Ethan killed, <laughs> Ethan killed Julian for me. <laughs> for me. I was glad that she didn't get too excited about that. Like, I was worried that she was going to be like, oh, my God. But yeah. no. And also, wouldn't you have believed at that point in time? Like, I didn't know anything about, like, editing shit like that. Like, I would have believed that tape. It was very, very believable. Yeah, I would have believed the tape. I, I would have seen it and been like, oh, my gosh. Like, I, at in 2002, yeah, we didn't have any... It wasn't so easy to doctor videos. And no, now them. everything, even someone talking directly to the camera, you have to be like, that might not be that person. But yeah. 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 But back then, I, yeah, you see it, you believe it. Yep. So she says, Ethan killed Julian for me. <laughs> of course, it's all about Teresa, of course. <laughs> so uh, then she immediately calls that guy who gave her the tape um, and demands to see him immediately. He shows up, explains that the the way he got that tape is that he was actually working at the cannery the night that the murder happened. He saw everything. So he's saying he's a witness to this. Right. He says he saw everything. I feel like then... he was saying that I thought he was saying that he filmed it. Like I thought that's what he was trying to say. <laughs> I I know he was just working. No, you're there. right. I think you're probably right. Cause then he says, I saw everything and then I um took the I took the surveillance tape because right. I knew that the cops would be looking for it. And um, I switched it out with another tape that didn't have it, the, the shooting on it. Right. right. So she, he, he says that he wants a hundred thousand dollars for starters. Yes. Right. So she's like, I'll pay you whatever oh, you want. Yeah. He says, I want a hundred K to start and she says uh, to start i'm not going to be your personal money machine and he's like you'll do whatever i say you'll do unless you want to see your sweet cute little ethan sent up the river and strapped into the electric chair um and so she writes him a check yeah presumably for a hundred thousand dollars yeah let's bring I don't yeah think you can write a check for that amount of money i don't think a, a, a bank would cash it i think they would also check with they would there would be a lot of things happening for there sure. has to be at i believe there has to be at least like a second signature for that kind of money i've tried to like put like a couple thousand in a check and it was a problem with my yeah staff. so i don't know I, I but whatever she wrote it it was like fine yeah, she um, wrote him a personal and, check for and 100K. she started a, a blackmail relationship. The beginnings of a beautiful blackmail thing. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, or, we never see this man again. I, uh, I feel like we must see him again. I don't know. I this is all my first time watching it, so I have no idea. I don't remember, but I feel like we could continue this storyline without ever seeing him again. Okay, yeah, that'll be interesting to see if you're right. I, yeah. 
I, you know, he probably will pop up again, but I feel like he's unnecessary, but he isn't. Yeah. He's not a threat in and of himself. It's all the women. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Teresa gives him the check and as he's leaving, Ethan comes into the library and he's like, who is this? And why is she paying you? And Teresa <laughs> says to him, oh no, Ethan, he, I just bought something from him. It's like, like what? what? Yeah, he didn't ask what, though. I was wondering that I would have asked what. But I guess he figures it's none of his business. It wasn't. It was weird that he came in. He was right. It was sketchy, but it was weird that he came in like that and was angry. So, yeah, asking what might just continue the controlling kind of vibe or whatever. I think he was right. He was obviously right, though. She did need help, but she couldn't take it from him. So, yeah, I think <laughs> I, I guess he just... He, I guess he's trying to like keep a boundary between them, but he asked in the first place, like if he, if he felt like it wasn't any of his business to ask what she was buying, right. then she, it really wasn't any of his business to ask who he Started was. In the first place. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. This is because right now this is not your house. This is Teresa's house. Right. And she can have anybody in here. She wants. Right. But um, anyway, yeah. she diffuses the situation. Ethan like apologizes to her for, uh jumping to conclusions i guess mm -hmm. uh then um keeping the oh i was like trying to figure out for the life of me because in my mind if i saw a tape where say say my say my niece for instance yeah. who i love and will do anything for and will go down for if i have to right if i saw a tape of her murdering someone and I was thinking of covering it up, like I'm ready to cover this up. I'm gonna loop you in. I'm gonna loop her in on the situation. You're like, listen, I just, I know what you did. I know that you killed this person. I'm going to help you bury the body, basically. Yeah, yeah immediately. Is. Yeah, no, but she, she's acts like I think she's just so flattered that he did it for her that she's just like, we're back together. She doesn't act like that, but I feel like in the back of her head, she's kind of just like likes it and is taking it and putting it in her pocket as like a nice thing he did because the second that man came the second ethan came in and he questioned why that man was there i would have been like well he gave me a very interesting tape and it's got you on it and he's Absolutely. extorting money out of me for it yes what should we do about it like yeah. also that's a great bonding thing you gotta pay your half <laughs> yeah yeah i just paid a hundred thousand what are you gonna do <laughs> yeah um and so anyway <laughs> That guy just leaves. Teresa just keeps everything from Ethan. Yep. And then she asks Ethan, she goes, <laughs> Ethan, did you truly hate Julian? Did you hate him enough to kill him? <laughs> and he's like, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's like, haven't we had this conversation? She could, have asked, she could have gone on the street in a blindfold and pointed to someone and been like, did you hate Julian enough to kill him? And they would be like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, he, she says, uh, he was like, yeah, I did hate him, but not for the reasons you think. Um, because <laughs> she had said something about him, like throwing him out when he found out he wasn't a crane. Right. But then, cause which is, uh, she's obviously like baiting him to say, yeah. well, I hated him because of what he did to you, which is exactly what he says. He's right. like, I hated him for ruining your life. Yeah. Um, and then he changes the subject. He's like, why are we talking about this? Let's not talk about the de Julian's death. And it's so weird. It, also, if he had killed him, that would have been like, why do you ask that? Like, it would have been like a, like a moment. And it wasn't because he didn't, he's just like, whatever. So I'm going to get some ice cream. It's like, of course <laughs> you are, Ethan. <laughs> yeah. So then he, uh, she, I think she goes to like get some tea or something. I don't know. He's left there in the, the alone in there and he like almost sees the tape right but i it was all honestly it was all like shenanigans and back and forth and run around he yeah. he doesn't see that he never sees the tape right um teresa teresa works hard to make sure he doesn't see the tape like she he's actually i'm I'm going to say the, the, the words, he sees the tape. He doesn't see the tape a million more times. <laughs> I've already said them a thousand, but he did see the tape and it had no, his he, name and Julian's name on it. hundred percent. Right. 
So he she, kind of, she kind of was gaslighting him and being like, what, what tape? It's like, but he held it in his hands and saw it. And it's like, no, you didn't. That's exactly what I wrote in my right. notes is that she gaslights him. Okay. Yeah. It's That's exactly what I wrote in my notes. Um, Because he, he sees the tape, but man, Teresa manages to get the physical tape out of his hands and like out of the VCR behind right. his back. That's what yeah. it is. He had put it, he had actually put the tape in. That's what it yeah. is. No, he and then he went to go play it and was like, why isn't it playing? And then realized that there was no tape inside. Yeah, because he had put it in, something happened. Teresa, in room. that moment, took mm -hmm. it out of the VCR. Yeah. And when he comes back to watch the tape, there's no tape in the VCR. And then that's when he asked Teresa, like, hey, there was a tape here before with my name and Julian's name on it. Did you happen to see it? She's like, I've never seen a tape like that before in my As life. As the only other person in the room, did you see anything about that tape? Like, yeah, really, no one else was there. And then she's like, well, maybe one of the maids took it. So he goes and checks with the maids, comes back immediately and is like, yeah, none of the maids said they had it. What, do you, <laughs> what did you do with the tape? <laughs> she's like with her bag, like, yeah. like you, do you have the tape in your bag? I just... <laughs> It's ridiculous. She has the yeah. tape in her bag. Yeah. Clearly, obviously. Obviously, yeah. She's protecting it like it's a football and she's like, yeah. Yeah. And so she just is like straight up lying. Like, I don't know. I haven't seen any tape. I don't know what you're talking about. He clocks that she's lying, which is not too hard to clock that. She, yeah. She's just so she's freaking out. She's yeah. like, you described her as a freaked out chihuahua, I think at some point, And that's accurate. Like, she's so obvious when she's freaking out. Yeah. I may have, but <laughs> she, I don't remember, but that's what she's acting like, really. Yeah. Um, and uh, so he, they go back and forth. She keeps saying like, no, nope, there was no tape. There was no tape. You, you imagined it basically. Yep. Um, and then uh he oh i know what it was he like went to somebody was knocking on the door yeah i remember all of it now i because i didn't write it in my notes because it was so stupid yeah but like uh, it was whitney whitney yeah. was like knocking on the door out, to go outside the to door. call her mom she left the property and then came back yeah and then he went to go get the door and when he came back Teresa had taken the tape that's what it was so Teresa tells all the, uh, both of them, oh, we have to go to the studio, the music studio. Chad called and wanted us to come over. Okay. And so they go to the recording studio to see Chad. And when they get there, Chad's like, hey, guys, what are you doing here? Right. He's so happy to see them, though, because it's like, Whitney, are you going to? No. Yeah. Let Actually, let's very quickly talk about this because it was so small. We can go ahead and say it. When they go to the recording studio, uh, Chad plays a song for them that he just wrote. It does. It, he's got the lyrics, but there's no one singing on the track right now. So he plays this little track for them. And then he asks Whitney outright, like, will you sing this song? I already got a girl who's singing it, but it's not right. Like, I, it really needs your voice. And she declines of course but then immediately starts humming i hate oh it. god no i like i feel so bad for chad at this point like because like if someone was doing i feel like it's just it's brutal to watch like her it's not even dangling a carrot it's like he wants her to be dangling a carrot like she but then yeah then she's as soon as he's like okay and disengages mm -hmm. she's like Mm hmm maybe and it's like maybe and then but then also says to herself I can't know and he's like ah okay fine yeah yeah so that's really all that happens yeah. within this week at one point Chad has a conversation which we'll we'll probably talk about it a little bit because it's in my notes somewhere but at some one point Chad has a conversation with Ethan wherein he says he needs to just move on from Whitney yeah no and I agree I yes. agree. Move oh on, my buddy. God, yes. You can do so much better at this point. Yeah. So back to Teresa and Ethan and Rebecca and Ivy, all this nonsense. So after they, while all of this is happening with uh, Teresa and the tape and Ethan, Ivy and Rebecca are having their whole, their own little watch party, if you will. Yeah. They're yeah. just like watching all of the events unfold. Ivy still has her doubts that Teresa will sacrifice herself for Ethan. 
Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Uh, Cause who would, what kind of, yeah. what kind of sane person would do that? Yeah. Um, but Rebecca reassures her by saying, I know Teresa, I, I, am an excellent judge of character. She said, I think she says, I may not be an Einstein, but I am an excellent judge of character. And reasons, yeah. I know Teresa's character. And all we have to do is convince her that Ethan will get the death penalty, but a sweet young pregnant little girl who was basically raped will only serve a very little short time in jail. That That is a direct quote from the show. Yeah. I, and I want to sit on this for a little bit um yeah. and talk about it because she says it she says the thing she says they, the they all have been right. from like when i was last there's been a lot of change in the way they talk about it yeah and i in a way i can appreciate it in another way i am looking at her like okay you just said all of those horrible things that happened to Teresa. you still want her it. to die yeah. Um, and so she says all that. Then she says to Ivy, because Ivy's like, well, we don't want her to get a short time in jail. And Rebecca says, don't worry. We will make sure that she gets the death penalty. It's so dark. When she, I, the, they said, a, I think a couple times that, and she, I think Ivy's uncomfortable with it. Like she just feels like she's going along with it and she's complicit. But I felt like she didn't wasn't like I don't know I just think that Rebecca is really into it and a sadistic Rebecca's way. like reveling in it yeah she thinks it's hilarious yeah. yeah Rebecca is reveling in it Ivy I think Ivy would be reveling in it if there was if the tape didn't implicate Ethan oh you're right that probably is what I was sensing you're right it's yeah. about Ethan I thought I she was she... uncomfortable morally with the degree of it but you're right no I don't think she has any issues with that because I... because she's she has made it clear that she wants she also wants to kill Teresa right I know but it's just one I don't know just following through with it is just I don't know yeah it's one thing to say like oh I could kill her it's another thing to like set somebody up to yeah. you know die yeah. by lethal ex lethal injection um it, 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 and it's honestly it's so sick and the more I think about it like Rebecca is one thing she's a villainess right she's yeah Ivy gross. considering the fact that she has such a deep relationship with Polar for so long yeah and the fact that she's considering murdering one of Polar's children really makes me sick to my stomach yeah it, me too and also the way that basically it's like she's willing to die for your son so I thought the problem was that she was like didn't love your son but it's like she it isn't obviously and it, uh, that's been obvious for a while but it's just like um yeah I'm glad you brought that up because that's exactly right I I because I didn't write it in my notes but I've been noticing that too that it's clear that Ivy knows and understands that Teresa definitely loves Ethan yeah. she just doesn't care they're counting on it. Yeah. 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 They, they're counting on it. They're counting on the fact that she will sacrifice herself for oh, her love. Of yes. It's crazy. You know, he's like this really rich dude. It just is like, don't take the fall for him. Like, what are you doing? Also, uh, just to go back to your further, like previous thing, it's like include Ethan in on it. Like, it's like, he wouldn't want her to do that. And it's just so stupid. Yeah. It's You're driving me kid. crazy that she's not looping him in on it. I don't, get I don't get it at all right. I don't get it at all it's the dumbest plot point in this whole thing right the yeah. whole thing it's it's the dumbest plot point this week if you ask me and I watched that bullshit about the Titanic with yeah I was actually just like is it the dumbest but yeah, yeah it is it in my opinion it just doesn't make sense the Titanic stuff is like very like makes sense for the show but yeah Teresa it's just annoying um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but this is so stupid. Yeah. Um, especially considering this would this is something that this is a perfect opportunity for her to get closer to Ethan. Right. I yes. It's like, wait, and also on the other side, he literally broke up with you because you're keeping shit from him. And then she's like, you know what? I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, I'm gonna not only am, am I gonna do it again, but then also. The fact that if Ethan was the one who killed Julian as she believes, right, then now he also is keeping something from her, right? right. Yeah, like, that's true. Yeah, she actually doesn't seem angry at all about it. She's just like, 
Yeah. She's doing exactly what they think, which is very one dimensional. But yeah, it's dumb as fuck. But <laughs> here we go. But here we are watching it. Yes. So, <laughs> and talking about it 20 years later. So um, anyway, they're they're plotting to give her to kill her. Ivy and Rebecca are plotting on her. And um, meanwhile, uh, sorry, they're plotting. Then Rebecca encounters that guy as he's like leaving the mansion, yeah. the guy with the tape, and she he gives her the check. I was shocked and by so that. So the check is a part of her plan somehow. She like tucks it she away and says yeah. this is for our plan. Right. Well, it's just her money now. I think it's the vibe. Well, who did it? Who was it written out to? I guess to cash. Can I guess write a hundred thousand dollar check out to cash. No, in my head, like I was like he. Um, they agreed on a name like they agreed on some company name that he would say and then she could take it and it seemed like when she did take it they had said that that would happen but he could have not given it to he is in this really shady dealing he had a hundred thousand dollar check written out to him I guess and it's like okay but he gave it to her here's what I think right in her boob yeah here's what I think sure. I think and I'm probably completely wrong about this but I think the check they I think she's going to um, use the check as like evidence that Teresa okay. was trying to cover up the murder. Cause, because if you can doctor one tape, you can doctor another one, right? Yeah. So there's yeah. one tape with Ethan on it, but who's to say there's not another tape with Teresa on it? Yeah, that makes sense. Right? Yeah, and, and also so, wrote, uh, it could be an admission of guilt, like being like, don't tell that I murdered him. Here's like this check mm -hmm. that I wrote in my handwriting. You're right. I bet that is exactly I right. I wrote this check. They'll find the tape. They'll find the check. It'll all, and it'll all point back to Teresa. I, yep. I That's my assumption. That, that makes know. a lot of sense. I think it makes sense. Yeah, I don't know. But anyway, Rebecca's thrilled at how her plan is working out. And then she starts to tell Ivy the next portion of her plan, which we don't know. Yeah. It's just out. And neither does Ivy, really. She's just yeah. going along with Rebecca's bullshit. It's crazy. Right. I guess, you know what? I'm going to chalk it up to she's just high on drugs all the time now. That's true. That is true. She's like, just high on pain medication. I, I, I have to hold out hope for Ivy because I like Ivy as a character. But it, like you said, it's getting so incredibly dark. Yeah. It's hard to root for her. Yeah, I love women doing dark. I'm a huge like I'm always in like movies and stuff when women are doing dark shit, even the bad guys like when it's a woman, I'm like, go for it. Do it. Me too. But with Ivy right now, I'm, I am finding it hard to feel that way. Yeah. And it's like she's doing it to a, like a young girl. It's a not really young girl who's yeah. a baby that like she didn't want. She knows what happened to Teresa. She knows she desperately loves her son and is and wants what's best for him i don't know it's just so weird it's like what are you even doing i think they, drugs is the, actually the only thing that really makes sense yeah because yeah. there's no portion of this revenge plot of hers that i can get behind that i can be like yeah i see why you want this level of revenge on Teresa. Right. i don't see it i don't so get it's it it's just a hateful thing it's just her hating someone and uh, yeah yeah and to re and the thing is, the reason she wants so much revenge on Teresa now, I think, at this point, is because of the whole Teresa be claiming that she's Mrs. Julian Crane. But yeah. Teresa dying does not does not then make you Mrs. Julian Crane. You don't yeah. inherit the estate after she yeah. dies, right? Yeah. I and who that does it? Who does inherit that money if she's out of the way? I I imagine the money goes to her next of kin, her mom. Okay. Oh, to Pilar? Yeah. That would be so great. I don't, I know that doesn't happen, but that would be great. Yeah. If she has the baby, it goes to the baby. But if it, if she were to yeah. die, her next, whoever her next of kin is, which I believe is her mother, unless she, unless she signed it over to Ethan for some I reason. I was just going to say, I bet she did. Like she just, is a, yeah, but yeah. Yeah. So, which Pilar wouldn't want the money anyway. So, cause she, she would donate just it. Just loves the struggle so fucking much. I <laughs> don't get it. <laughs> uh. But uh, so anyway, Rebecca's thrilled. Her plan's working out. Tells Ivy about the next part of the plan. The Meanwhile, uh, at the recording studio, Teresa, Ethan, Whitney, Chad are all there. Ethan questions Teresa about why she's lying to him. He's uh. like, I know you. Yeah, I can tell that he's like, I can tell when you're lying now that you've lied to me so much. 
also she's so obvious when she lies it's like you're clearly about to have a heart attack so yeah so he says just tell me the truth what is going on like why did you make us come over here when chad said that he didn't call us over here right and she says to him i you're right i am keeping something from you but it's not what you think. I wanted us to come over here because I'm trying to play matchmaker between Chad and Whitney, which I think also is true. Yeah. Like, I don't think that's a lie. Yeah. Um, or it, was, it's a conven it's a very that was not, I truth. think in general she is wanting that. I don't think that was why she did that, but yeah. she does. Yeah. So it was it's like a very convenient truth that she wants the two of them to get together. And it works for this situation. Yeah. And he like apologizes to her again and is like, oh. I'm sorry, Teresa. I just jumped to conclusions. You're right. Because Teresa uh, Teresa gives him like this whole speech about she knows that the two of them love each other. Talking about Whitney and Chad, I know that they love each other and they just need a push. And I know I ruined my relationship with you, but I'll be damned if I see Whitney make the same mistake and lose her love. Hey, I thought that was genius. When I saw that, I was like, that would have won me back if I were Ethan. I'd be like, <laughs> So she accepts that she lost me and she's totally chill with it, but she still wants love to prevail like other places. I don't know. That would have won me over. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. It, there's a lot of, there's a lot of water under that bridge, but, yeah. but yeah, I think it was a smart, I do think it was a smart move on her part, part to like say that and frame it that way. Right. right. Mm -hmm. it, it, it makes her look good. Uh, meanwhile, Whitney also notices that something is off about Teresa. She's just right. like, something is wrong with you. Why are right. you shaking so bad? <laughs> Teresa is denying it for the most part until really late. Like she's like, I'm not freaking out. Like everything. But then at a certain point she does admit it, but that's like a little later. Yeah. And then we're going to go ahead and just kind of skip ahead. Later, Chad is like talking to Whitney and he deduces that oh actually i skipped too much i skipped too much i'm not gonna skip that much i'm not gonna skip that much i want to but i'm not going to okay right. so after everything that's going on at the the studio you know chad asks whitney to sing she starts she tells him no but then starts humming very annoyingly um after all that chad and ethan go to the book cafe and they have a conversation where chad talks about it's talking about himself and whitney he manages to get like one sentence out about himself before Ethan turns the conversation into Teresa and him. Right. right. Like, yeah. um, Chad says, you know, I just need to move on from Whitney. And instead of Ethan giving him like, no, like, you should yeah. give Whitney the try or being like, yeah, anything. you should anything. Instead of him staying in the conversation with Chad about Chad, he turns the conversation into a conversation about him and Teresa. Right. Um, and so he just starts talking about how, he's worried about Teresa and she's, I know she's hiding something, blah, blah, blah. Same old, same old. While they're having that conversation, Teresa and Whitney are like kind of having it out on the pier because Whitney will not let up on the fact that something is off. Something yeah. is wrong with Teresa. She's like, I've known you your entire life. We've known each right. other our entire lives. Yeah. And you're, and this is exactly how you act when shit is about to hit the fan. So what is it? And she mm -hmm. won't, and Teresa refuses, refuses to tell her, which shocks Whitney because Whitney is used to bearing the brunt of Teresa's bullshit, right? And her weird fantasies. She usually tells her all her crazy ideas and it's yeah. like, yeah. And in a way, I think it kind of hurts Whitney's feelings, which is crazy, honestly, because I would be like glad, like, okay, I'm glad you're not putting whatever this is on me today. Yeah. You yes. know, I've had enough for a while. Get, yes. I'm playing for the break. And I, I have my own shit I'm dealing with, so. Yeah. Um, but she seems a little hurt that Teresa won't talk to her. And, yeah. which is, I guess, understandable, but Teresa seems very upset. So it's like, mm, what, uh, do I even want to know? I mean, yeah. knowing Teresa, it'd be one thing, it would be one thing if it was somebody a little more normal around right. town, you know? Yes. No, yeah. If they started acting like this, but the fact that it's Teresa, it's like, mm, do I even really want to know? Yeah. Mm, I, no. If I were Whitney, I'd be over it, but she's not. That's why they're friends. She's not over it. Yeah, she loves Teresa. Yeah. So she tells Teresa, well, if you won't tell me, if you can't talk to me, you should at least talk to Luis about it. Yeah. And she's like, Luis, oh. Luis is the last person I can tell about this. <laughs> Luis, no, no, not Luis. 
like, oh, okay, so you're good then. <laughs> like, what? She, yeah. I mean, she definitely overreacts to um, the her saying you should talk to Luis about it. And um, I would have PTSD as his sister too. <laughs> like, I'd be like, please yeah. don't tell him. God, he'll he's insane. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, and yeah, with this, with what Teresa wants, the outcome that Teresa is looking for, Luis definitely is like the last person. I don't say the person she goes to is the last person i would go to but <laughs> like father lonigan you mean <laughs> yeah but i get i get why she wouldn't want to go to louise i don't get why she like is making such Freaked a big out deal about it. when she's trying to be like nothing's wrong and then she's yeah. i think that's like kind of i would take that as like my friend pushing me to ask more or whatever but she's not she really is just yeah well then whitney's like well, if you won't talk to me and you won't talk to the, talk to Luis, maybe you should take it to God. Take it to the Lord in prayer, okay? <laughs> and um, she's like, St. Mary's is just around the corner. You should go and talk to God about it. Pray to God and ask him for guidance. <laughs> well, Teresa's like, you know what? There's someone else I can talk to. Father Lonigan. And so she runs over to the church to go and talk to Father Lonigan of all people. I did. This is another choice that just did not make any sense to me because yeah. girl, what is, what is it that you are looking for? What is the outcome that you are looking for with yeah, this type of situation? What was she, what, what hypothetically would she be at, like wanting him to say to her? I don't think it was just to get her off the um, like moral hook. I feel like she was wanting, I think she wanted him to tell her exactly what to do in a criminal situation like this even though he clearly is not someone that he doesn't get involved and in, he is like toast, like milk toast. Like he's like very black and white. And like, I feel like her wanting him to have these spiritual insights isn't really accounting for the reality of who he is. He's like, yeah. Well, we've only ever heard him say one thing and that is yeah. you have to do the right thing. You have to tell the truth. We've only ever heard him say you have to tell the truth to anybody yeah. who comes to him with any kind of dilemma. Yes. He only ever says to them, you have to tell the truth. We know this. And she's been going to confession here. When's your first confession, first com communion or whatever, like nine. She's yeah. been doing this forever. Yeah. You know what he's going to say to you, girl. Right. Yeah. And yet she goes to the church to try and get the priest to back her up in a plot to cover up a murder I, he, and he, <laughs> I don't get it I, I just don't get it and then she gets so mad when it doesn't work and it's like Teresa you had to have at least considered that that didn't like it's like if you're gonna go on a crazy idea like at least know that it's crazy but she gets really mad at him and she's like I don't know yeah and actually, before she goes to the church, I need to say this one thing because it's slightly important. Chad catches up with the two ladies. Ethan's not with him. He's, he sees them, like, talking. He catches up with them and tells Teresa, because, of course, she's like, where's Ethan? She He tells Teresa uh, that he went back to the mansion and that they had heard that the investigation into Julian's murder was being ramped up and that they were really looking for who really gonna start investigating who did this right so, and that like sends her into a tailspin and she runs off <laughs> and so, her just running away and she's just so funny i i crack up all the time hilarious crazy yeah. mm -hmm. crazy insufferable yeah. sometimes but funny she she oh god these choices don't make any sense so yeah she runs off Chad mentions to Whitney because Whitney's like, I don't know what's going on with Teresa. Yeah. And he says, well, maybe she knows something about Julian's murder. He clocked it immediately. Yeah, immediately. Because she's being pretty obvious about it. Yeah. Whitney doesn't believe it, of course. She's like, no, Teresa, Teresa doesn't know anything about that. There's no way. But he's like, mm, I don't know. She ran away pretty quickly once we started talking about Julian's murder. I don't know. I have record with being in inc like in crazy situations that, like this. So it's like, but she doesn't think it. But she is aware that it's really bad. She's like, whatever it is, it's, um, it's really, really bad. And like, that's all they kind of say on it. Yeah, so then Teresa goes to the church. 
<laughs> and she asks to speak to Father Lonigan, and then she tells him when he comes out, what is it, my child? She says, Father, it's a matter of life and death. And I wrote in my notes, <laughs> I wrote in my notes, she she's not going to take any advice, so I don't know why we are even bothering with this. Yeah. Like, she's not going to take any advice from Father Lonigan. Why are we bothering with sending her to the fucking church? It, I, it doesn't... Uh, it doesn't it make sense. Doesn't that it, me. I write it. I'm thinking it's like her programming. Like she like grew up turning to the church, so she's freaking out and she's just turning to it again. You know what? I love the I love the use of the word programming. You're absolutely right. It is her pro. You you are absolutely right. Because I was like, why are we doing this? Yeah, but it, it, it does track for the character. You're right. You're right. I'm wrong. She <laughs> is her programming. So she goes. Um, and she tells him that she's more frightened than she's ever been. And she says, you have to promise to keep what I tell you confidential. Which he can't actually, which he yeah. is about to say he like legally can't and morally can't. So, but yeah. And he, he agrees. Cause he's like, yeah, no, because in his mind, he's not thinking she's about to tell him about a murder. He thinks, he thinks, thinks he did on someone or something like yeah, that. He thinks it's just, it's regular run of the mill parishioner confession type stuff. I mean, maybe a little bit crazier cause it's Teresa, but yeah. he, I don't think he, oh no, I know he wasn't. I know. Yeah. He did said. not think she was about to put this on him. Oh, uh, it was horrible. So the next thing she says is I know who killed Julian Crane. It was Ethan. <laughs> she kept the secret for like an hour <laughs> the way they are like just like out in the open in the sanctuary and not like oh, you're right yeah no yeah in a confessional or in his office or anything like anybody could be in here but she's so she says this out loud um father lonigan immediately he looks disturbed by what he's heard yeah. and he immediately wants no parts he's like this is a he literally says this is a matter for the police right. <laughs> and he's correct he's, he's trying to set the boundary he's so right this is a matter for the police teresa yeah and then she explains that oh, i can't take this to the police if anything like they'll um they'll get him for murder and he'll go to jail or worse he'll get the death penalty and she says if anything happened to him i would die and then he uh father lonigan tells her that she has an obligation to tell the police what she knows yeah um and she's like no i can't i can't don't you understand i love ethan i can't do that and then he's like well if you can't go directly to the police maybe go talk to your brother Luis she of course yeah. refuses I mean I don't know why he thought that would work Luis is a cop he is she's trying to keep it from the from the law yeah. enforcement as much as she possibly can yeah. um and so they just go back and forth and back and forth for a while I know this man was tired because <laughs> I mean it's, it's talking to her has to be exhausting when she has her mind made up but is yeah. expecting you to give her advice and when you give her the fucking advice she doesn't like it and keeps arguing with you so that you will give her different advice but you've already yeah. given her Right. your advice or what you feel about yeah exactly she's and then like yes basically that's exhausted that's she does. yeah it is exhausting yeah so they go back and forth back and forth for a while uh Teresa doesn't listen to him of course she does not of course she doesn't listen to him that's what she, that's yeah again it's her programming like you said I, I it's her programming because I was like why is she even bothering with this you know what father you know exactly what father Lonigan's going to say to you yeah, she, she, yeah, she was not accounting for who he actually is and yeah. her actual history with him. Yeah. So then he finally tells her, Teresa, you've put me in a very tough position. And now I must go to the police and tell them what you told me. Right. She gets pissed. <laughs> yeah, I'd be scared. I would never say that alone with Teresa, especially like in the dark. Like I would never be like, I'm going to come between you and Ethan. <laughs> <laughs> what a scary thought right so, um she tries to stop him citing her priest parishioner conf confidentiality agreement with him right like we had we had a confidentiality agreement I already told you that stopped once you said that yeah so it's like okay Teresa yeah and it's like maybe that's not even legal that's not even a legal thing to be yeah. clear 
Like yeah. just because you you tell your priest something doesn't mean that they abs they can't tell anybody legally. Right. The it's church, not like you're a doctor. The church might look down on it. Yeah, but, but it's I not mean, like and also I like a doctor would have to tell too. Like it's like there are limits to that promise, but it's yeah. like and that's actually I think specifically the limit. Like I think that murder is the limit and I like, almost did a like spit take like i almost spit out my water like, it's, it's like, and it's like and she's asking that same thing to be transferred onto this priest and it's like yeah he didn't sign anything and he no. told her straight out please don't tell me this yeah and you're right murder is the limit like honestly people have um a duty to report like you're a, a mandated reporter in certain situations so yeah. Like, I mean, oh. if someone's like, I'm going to shoot this place up, you have, like, it's like, yeah. therapists have run into this and it's been a problem. So they have to tell. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, he's like, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to the police if you won't. I, right. I have to, I have to do that now because you've put me in this position. Yeah. Um, and ter uh, like I said, Teresa is pissed. Right. And then, um, he tells her that, he's like you're you've changed this isn't who you are i've known you all your life i i've listened to every confession from you from the time you were a little girl and sh teresa makes this like impassioned speech where she talks about how life has changed her she says because he calls her teresa teresa lopez fitzgerald and she says i'm teresa crane now yeah um and life has changed me and there's no turning back all i ever wanted oh all i ever wanted was ethan i believed in fate and happily ever after but that all backfired and i got smacked in the face by life so hard yeah. And I like I honestly I enjoyed the speech. I liked it. I um I felt I felt for her. I do feel for Teresa. I really do in in and some she's situations. Also pointing out the obvious thing where it's like he's like you have to do the right thing, but it's like so many wrong things have happened to her that it's kind of hard to be like I'll do the right thing. It's like what's the right thing? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and the next thing she he says to her is uh trust in God, my child. And she says, "How?" How can I do that when he is the one who let this happen to me? Right. And I couldn't be, Listen, honestly, that's, I, that's, I couldn't be mad at her for it. No, that's exactly the kind of thing that a priest is actually supposed to deal with is questions like that. Like, why did this happen? Things like that. Well, Father Lonigan was not going for it. He was like, you will not blaspheme the name of the Lord in my face. And he's like, uh, God, he says, God gives us free will so we can make our own de decisions. And then Teresa exclaims, is that the same God who put Julian Crane in my life so that he could take advantage of me and steal all of my hopes and dreams? I may have lost Ethan, but I will be damned if I let him go to jail or die because of me. I will not let that happen. Okay. I feel like I was like so with her and then she made it like about uh, Ethan. Weird. Yeah. It just made it weird, but she was so right until the very last. Mm -hmm. She was, she was on point, but Lonigan and again I don't know um I I don't know where we are with this because it kind of cut off without us getting any real resolution like this yeah. the the end of the week Teresa is still at the church yeah but it's at a certain point it did seem like Father Lonigan was starting to be on board with Teresa I'm not sure about that so yeah. Father Lonigan at one point says to her he, he basically posits this scenario that someone else who is innocent may be punished for the crime for a crime that they didn't commit. And she says, well, I didn't think about that. It was like, yeah, no shit. And then she says, if anyone is to blame for the murder, it's me. So we're getting, we're starting to get the inkling that she's going to go along with what Rebecca says and, and, and yeah. say, yeah, I did this. Mm -hmm. Um, Father Lonigan seems to be convinced. I, that's what I'm saying. Like we ended off this week and it seemed like he was like on board. He, yeah. he asks her what she intends to do. And she says, I'm going to protect Ethan. Nobody knows he did it, but us. And I'm never going to say anything. And I need your word that you won't say anything either. No one can ever know that Ethan killed Julian. And 
And that's where we ended this week. And the only reason, well, that's not where we ended, ended. There's still some, a little more like Ethan stuff to talk about. But yeah. um, the only reason I think Father Lonigan is on board is because he asks Teresa again what she intends to do. Yeah. Like, and her lead, kind of. I know where this whole plot goes. And so since I know where this whole plot goes, it, I, it seems to me that Father Lonigan decides to keep his mouth shut. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. I've been saying for years, I said it at the very beginning of this show when we, we started this podcast, yeah. that Father Lonigan is the least helpful character in the show. He knows yeah. everything and does nothing. He's like that regular. Angel. They they show up and they're just like, I'm here for you in thought and <laughs> yeah, he's, symbolically I'm here. He's so yeah. useless. He's so yeah. useless. Cause honestly, this is a scenario where to in my mind, if I'm thinking about what father I believe that Father Lonigan really only has one choice in this situation. Yeah, to to like interfere. Yeah, to go to the police and tell him that Teresa came and told him that Ethan murdered Julian and yeah. that she saw it on the tape. Mm -hmm. that's I t but obviously he makes another choice wouldn't i think that Teresa's is so charming i would be easily swayed by her if i think about it if she was like you're not going to tell anyone i'd be like you're right i won't <laughs> you know here's the thing for me sure if Teresa told especially with the with it being julian it's like yeah we all hated him it's like we're glad he's dead i know what he did to you it's like yeah i'll keep it i'll keep this to myself i'll take it to my grave i don't care i don't have any skin in this game yeah but if i'm the priest and i'm telling everybody else they have to tell the truth very different thing also throughout this whole thing Teresa and i didn't write it in my notes but um Teresa kept bringing up how bad of a person julian was and how he deserved to die and father lonigan kept saying like no one can judge another person yeah. but god right like we can't i it's not for me to say whether julian was good or bad mm -hmm. um all i know is that it's a mortal sin to murder someone so yeah so that's where we ended with the church stuff, but we just got to finish up with Ethan and what's going on with uh, Rebecca and Ivy and stuff for a little bit. Yeah. So Ethan goes back to the mansion and continues his tape for the uh, tape. <laughs> you, but that's exactly right. He continues his tape for the tape. <laughs> <laughs> he continues his search for that damn tape. That yeah, he's losing his mind. He earlier. Right. <laughs> I feel bad. I felt bad for him, honestly. Well, thank God that he knew because he doesn't. I he doesn't then think, oh, you're right. I I maybe didn't see it. He does the whole time say, I definitely saw a tape. They couldn't talk him out of it, right? Okay, that's yeah. okay. Yeah, he's just like, yeah, I saw it. I know a then. tape was here. Yeah. <laughs> Where is it? Stop lying to me. Yeah. Um, and then uh, he has a conversation with Rebecca and Ivy, telling them that he's worried about Teresa because she seems so troubled right now and he doesn't know what's going on with her. Rebecca says, well, maybe it's her guilty conscience. And uh, we get into a conversation wherein Rebecca basically accuses Teresa of murdering Julian. So let's kind of talk through it really quickly. So first, Ethan tells her, um, you know, let's because Rebecca's gotten a little too buddy buddy with him I think he's like let me just be clear with you for a second <laughs> Rebecca yeah <laughs> he's like let me while we while we're all here let's clear the air and, and on where we all stand he's like I love my mother so I'm defending my mother in her right. suit against Teresa right so she gets what she deserves in this yeah case. yeah Yes, I believe that she is entitled to this house, the money, everything. I believe she put in the time, it's hers. Yeah. But as far as Teresa is concerned, we do not agree. We are not on the same page about Teresa. And um, he says Teresa deserves at least part of Julian's estate. Then Rebecca brings up the $10 million settlement that Teresa turned down yeah. and says she turned down $10 million. You think this is about money for her? This is about, about more than money. It's about revenge and not just, um, it's not just about her baby. And that's what Ethan says. Well, Teresa's not vindictive. I know her character. Do you, Ethan? 
Ethan. <laughs> Ethan, buddy, right? buddy. Yeah. I'm gonna hold your hand when I say this. Yeah. <laughs> you Let's do not know that face. girl very well. Yeah, long. you really don't. Yeah. Um, he says, I know her character. She's not vindictive. And then Rebecca says, Then why were you so caught off guard when she lied to you? He is rendered speechless speechless. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where's where's my crickets? Yeah. There it goes. He's rendered <laughs> speechless. <laughs> I tried to make the sounds work. Um and then he, um, she says to him, I'm sure she was sweet when you met her, but she's been through a lot since then and people change, which is exactly what Teresa said at the church, right? That she has changed, yeah. right? Um, and she then says, she then starts to lay this groundwork to try and lead Ethan to believe that Teresa killed Julian, right? So she says, um, I agree that Julian treated Teresa horribly. I can only imagine how angry she was for at his betrayal. And I know she blamed him for her breakup with you. And then she says, if you examine the circumstances of Julian's death, I mean, really look at it. It's very easy to see that Teresa had plenty of reasons to see Julian fall off the face of the earth. Teresa had a very strong motive for killing Julian. And then Ethan goes, yeah, everybody else did too. <laughs> he's like, and so true. Yeah, he's like, yeah, we all had our reasons. Um, and then he says, but until Teresa comes to me with a full confession, I will never believe that she could kill anyone uh so that's that's uh, where we end it with them this week mm -hmm. you have anything to add i don't you do you did a good job <laughs> um yeah yeah it's a weird we're in a weird situation right now with Teresa and father lonigan i am very interested to see what he does i don't very yeah and i don't know what he does i because i've never seen it and you don't remember so we're like I'm sure he doesn't say anything. I cannot imagine him saying anything. I and I also can't imagine him holding her hand any farther than that night, that moment. Like, I don't think he's going to help her or tell. Yeah. I, and the thing is, I can think of many scenarios. The more I'm thinking about this, there's so many scenarios where this plan that Ivy and Rebecca have like cooked up where it just falls to pieces because all it takes at this point is for Father Lonigan to go to the police. That's yeah. it. That's all yeah. it takes. Yes. I don't know. So I'm that's what I was see. thinking is if it, like, I was thinking it would be awesome for her if he could take, like, she wouldn't do it, but he could maybe take this and do the right thing. And that maybe on some level that was what she wanted, but that's not what happens. And I don't think that's true. That's what I thought maybe though was happening. Yeah. I think this storyline, this little plot line is so incredibly flimsy and I, I, I really don't like it. It's, it's, it's fun to talk about. I do like that. Like it's fun to talk about, but the Teresa, the idea that Teresa would give herself up for Ethan it's one thing if she was covering for him for like a robbery. Okay. But a capital crime. Too. It's not just her. It's like her and her kid. Think about how stressful that would be to be pregnant in like prison. Even if you thought you were getting out, it's just like, that's so stressful. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. So, whatever. well, now we can move on to the magic storyline. I love that. I know I forgot to use my little music. I'm going to come up with a clip for like Teresa and Ethan. Stuff. Yeah, what would that even? It could be like the breathe in, breathe out yeah. thing. But the magic one is something I want for myself personally. Like I want that, like so I can play it in my car when I'm like driving just around. Just that little there. clip, not just that one clip, but like their entire kind of like sweet oh, that music. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I love it. Yeah, it's good. It's good stuff. I'm glad I had. I'm so glad Eric like sent me these the clips that he sent me. There's very helpful and useful Perfect. yeah um so magic yeah. okay y'all remember the youths are taunting timmy about being a burglar and they trap him inside the store uh so he can't get in the way no they want him to open the door for them 
and he won't he got out he, he basically he goes in and realizes when he's in there that they're trying to steal shit and he's like i can't do it um and and he doesn't want to and he and they know it they're like realize that he's onto them and then they threaten his dog yeah that's where it is that they threaten toto to make try and get him to open the door so timmy is trapped inside of this store and that's when the angel that angel woman appears yeah um she appears and timmy of course asks for help y'all can already figure out what she does yeah, what did she do to help not a damn thing yeah, she literally sure. showed up she always shows up just to tell them that she can't help it drives me crazy yeah. she so shows up and tells him to let his conscience be his guide but that he but she cannot intervene then you why know, the I fuck was, did you come i was <laughs> uh, yeah i i like and also no one could yes um, I, I was thinking that like, that was the moment in his head when he realized that the dog's life was more important than not letting them rob the store. Mm -hmm. I felt like that was her being like, choose the right thing. And it clicked in him that the right thing was to let him into the store. Basically. Okay. I'm glad that I'm glad that you made that analysis. Cause I was like, what was the point of this? But I okay. think that, no, but I'm, I think it's like what you do. You're Feeling, you're like, how does this make sense? Let me make it make sense, kind yeah. of. But it well, doesn't. What, what you said just does make sense. That she told him to let his conscience be his guide because he was like worried about Toto, but he yeah. also didn't want the, to let them into the store, so he didn't know what to do. And so she came to tell him, like, you know what to do. And then she fucked off. Yeah. And so he opens the door for these youths, and they come in. But he also hits the silent alarm button. Yes. Um as they're like rummaging through the cash register and he tries to leave. He's like, okay, well, you got what you wanted. I'll be on my way. And then they're, they're like, we won't let you go. What'd you say? I just want him to leave. Just sneak out, like sneak out. Don't be like, I'm leaving. It's like, don't ask <laughs> for permission. Like, yeah, don't announce it, yeah. but he announces it. And so they're like, not so fast, little guy. You could ID us to the police, to the cops. It's like, what are you going to kill him or take him with you for the rest of your life? Those That's are your two options. Exactly. I was like, are they going to murder him over $75 from a cash register? Uh, uh, honestly, if they were willing to hurt a dog, I don't doubt it for a second. I didn't yeah. doubt it for a second. I was like, mm -hmm. if they were going to hurt that dog, they'll kill this little kid that they think is a little kid. Well, Toto attacks them. He's like barking at them, trying to get them to stop and leave Timmy alone. Um, but Timmy gra grabs the dog, grabs Toto, and tells um, the the these burglars that he's like, well, it's money that you want, right? I have lots of money. Right. Back in Harmony, where I'm from. It's like, stop telling these people all your information. <laughs> yeah. the and then he, he picks up a copy of Hidden Very Passions, good. which yeah. is the only book on sale in this convenience store. Right. It's right next to him, too. It's like, oh, that's perfect there yeah. you go he pulls the book off the rack and he's like see timmy wrote this book this new york times bestseller hidden passions and i have lots of money they don't buy it they're like oh yeah sure you did buddy at this point the they the kids notice that the there's like police lights and sirens that they could see and hear coming yeah and they're like oh the cops he hit the alarm button and so they try to run <laughs> they try to scram out of there the police come running in guns out yeah. come running in freeze get down on the ground i thought that the i kids did too got away, but they i did too timmy. and timmy i think maybe did too he was on the ground and i was like no he's gonna get it. but then they went right by him and yeah and they got those fucking children those those uh teenagers <laughs> Yeah, they got the youths and um, the, and then these uh, teenagers are like, there was another guy here. He's the one that let us in. He's the one who really did all this. His name was Timmy. And he's a, he's really little. He's still here. So they look around looking yeah, for him. And um, the cops don't see him at first, but then they find Timmy. But then the, the dog, Toto attacks one of the police officers and the kids run off and so the cops run after those the older kids right and so timmy escapes 
he can leave. Unscathed. Yeah. He's like, well, that was lucky. And then he gets caught in a rainstorm and he hides away, like seeks shelter inside oh, of like a giant r- storm drain pipe, like a yeah. big pipe. Mm-hmm. And you'll never lo- walk alone plays in the background. And he, he's just like sitting there sad. Eating he has no a dream. Huh? He, he's eating milk bones, like dog treats. Yeah. <laughs> his cat is out. <laughs> I didn't even notice like, that. No. But yeah, he was. Yeah. And they run out. Um, he He's just so sad sitting there. He dreams of, uh, he has a dream about marrying Charity. Um, and then he has another, after the rain stops, he gets up with the dog and he has another run in with another cop. And you think that he's, it's just like, because he was part of that convenience store thing, but this cop just tells him his dog needs a license. As cops do randomly. Like, it's like, okay. (laughs) So now let's go to Harmony and pick up with what's going on with these children. All right. Everybody's preparing for charities. 18th birthday which apparently is the same day as antonio's birthday we will get there yeah but it's antonio's birthday and it's also charity's birthday Hmm. Mm -hmm. interesting i wonder if it'll be if that'll ever come up again like if they'll ever have birthdays on the same week ever again probably not totally not yeah so um they're all preparing this birthday party in the backyard of the bennett house for charity Simone and Jessica are there. Reese yeah. is also there, but I was really excited to see, see Simone Jessica. and Jessica. Yeah. I was really excited. We haven't seen them in weeks. We haven't seen them yeah. in weeks. Yeah. Like, literally, something was going on, and I was like, wouldn't Jessica be here? And I, I, it might have been something with Whitney, too. It was like, why isn't Simone involved? Where where are they? But yeah, Are they okay? They are. Yeah, are they okay? They're staying out of it. They're staying out of all of the mess. That's what it is. Um, so yeah, Simone, Jessica, Reese all make an appearance in this week, which was nice. Uh, of course, Reese does his regular accusing Tabitha of being a witch oh, thing. Hateful. It's like, it's like, I can't believe it. Can you imagine being at a barbecue and this kid is like the way he's at her, it's just like, whoa, chill out. You're being yeah. funny. Relax, bro. Yeah, yeah. Uh, meanwhile, Tabitha is at her house and she's going through a box of TV shows, like a box of VHS tapes that like had like TV shows on them. And she says they all flopped because of her. And, and, uh, when she had her powers for whatever reason, she had a vendetta against NBC and NBC. You know that must, there's a story behind that. They did that. There's something going on there in real it life. It was so funny to me that, because the whole thing was hilarious to me. So, and yeah. these are these are moments that normally I would like fast forward through or go like a little bit faster. I actually slowed this down to normal speed to watch it because it was just so it was just so campy. It was just so campy. Passions, yeah. And it wasn't yeah. like too over the top. It was perfect passions. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So she talks about how she, uh, MB, now that she doesn't have her, her powers, NBC is celebrating its 75th anniversary at the top of the, the, the primetime ranks. All thanks to her. They have a stellar primetime lineup and, uh, she I says, and it. and a certain groundbreaking daytime soap, which modesty precludes me from naming. And then the passions theme plays, which that is a sound I should put on the soundboard. Should I think, and I do think it should be, I guess, Teresa and Ethan. I, I could think of a few others, but I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I think of them when I hear it. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I, I Yeah. I agree. So anyway, the Passion Themes song starts playing. And I should say, I've neglected to say, zo- the zombie is there with Tabitha while Tabitha's like going through this box. Yeah. And when the when the theme song starts playing, yeah, yeah. zombie grabs Tabitha's yeah. hand and starts dancing with her. She loves it. She, I was shocked when she, that happened. She looks like her heart is warmed. Like she yeah. like puts her hand against her heart. She closes her eyes and sways like around. Her. Yeah. Yeah. And, and she loves it. They da- they dance to this song together. I thought it for made a little while. 
And then the zombie goes back to her regularly scheduled evil scheming. And yeah. um, she says that she's going to make sure that everyone's secrets in town get revealed, including the fact that Tabitha is a witch. She also continues to just like t constantly taunt Tabitha about how she's going to kill Timmy, which yeah. I hate. I do too. It's so dark and mean. <laughs> yeah, I, it would be one thing if he hadn't died, but he did die. And I obviously they were not into, they did not anticipate that. They did not know that was coming. But with the. Hard to hear it. Huh? It's hard to hear it with it. Yeah, know. with that knowledge, it just. Mm, and they just keep talking about like, you, you're going to see his dead body. You're going like, to. Yeah, you're right. That is so dark. I. When does that happen? Is that coming up soon? I feel like it's coming it up. It happens soon. in 2002, and we're in 2002, so it's coming up. Right. Okay. Yeah. So brace yourself. It's very sad. I yeah. It's so sad. I am really attached to him. Like I already am sad just even thinking about it. And like I know whatever. It's stupid, but I really love that character. No, it's not stupid because we need we need Timmy. Timmy's the heart, touching he's the soul of the, the thing. He's the heart. He's the one good person on the show. He's the yeah. one only like pure good person on the show right now. Yeah. Really. Yeah, because like Grace is supposed to be, but she's sketchy as hell and totally horrible. And then Charity's supposed to be, but she sucks. Like he really is just the good one. Yeah, and so I'm glad that he's getting his adventures. I'm I'm glad that they gave him so much kind of like you know. Yeah, he has a lot of material right now. Yeah. So, anyway, zombies scheming on Tabitha and everybody in town, and then she goes back over to the house to meet back up with the kids. Um, and she brings Tabitha along with her. She ropes Tabitha into reading tea leaves at the party. This is like part of her plan to make sure all of these secrets come out. She's like, Aunt Grace, please. I know you're like, I know you don't believe in it, but I would really love it if Tabitha read tea leaves at my party. I think everybody would get a real kick out of it. And Grace is like, whatever you want, honey. Um, and so, and Tabitha doesn't want to do it. It's so interesting how ta I and maybe it's just because she has a little bit of jealousy that it's the zombie that's going to be doing it and not her but yeah. it's interesting that she multiple times this week tries to warn the zombie like no we shouldn't you shouldn't do this you shouldn't yeah. you know especially about John and Grace that whole secret she's like well, why she does, yeah I mean she does I think it's character growth maybe for Tabitha yeah I think you know I like. I think maybe you're right. Yeah, because I know where Ta I know where Tabitha's character goes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's just so interesting because I mean, she's someone on fire. She's like a horrible person. So it's like, yeah, why aren't you? But this is exactly what she wants. But she, she sank the Titanic. Right. <laughs> I <laughs> mean, like it doesn't get much more evil than that very mean so but yeah but no she I think it's like I think Timmy makes is like the key for her I think Timmy opens her heart up and then she starts to love and yeah I agree so she she's kind of against zombie even though zombie's ready to bring a whole hell of a lot of pain and suffering to harmony right now yeah. um so yeah she ropes tap then to doing the tea leaves tap doesn't really want to do it but she agrees because she doesn't want to uh, raise suspicion obviously zombie then she goes over to john and offers to make her party for her birthday her 18th birthday a joint birthday party welcome party for john yeah and then she apologizes for how she was acting when he first showed up remember she was yeah. trying to sex him up real hard yeah she's like i wasn't myself she just brushes it off it's like no but it was really scary can we talk about it she's like no it's nothing we'll have a joint party yeah and um everybody's impressed with the exception of Kay that she's like willing to share her birthday party miguel's like you're so selfless you're so kind that's why i love you yeah. okay meanwhile uh the zombie oh later on zombie they're all like in the kitchen and zombie charity fakes a premonition because sam has been talking about um this murder case yeah. and how it you know they're on his ass about it but he doesn't have any leads and he just doesn't know where it's gonna go right. and then she's like she gets this premonition she act she does the charity thing she does a good job of pretending to be charity um 
she she's like, no, it's nothing. No, no, please don't bother. Don't worry about me. Don't worry about me. And finally, Grace is like, honey, did you have a premonition? And and Zombie Charity goes, how did you know? And Grace is like, well, I have them too. It's like, we already so know cool. this. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. You're right. They've talked, they know this. You're right. That's so funny. I didn't think of that. Yeah. Well, she's like, I have them too. What was it? And so she says she has a feeling that the murderer will be arrested very soon. And she yeah. says it directly to Sam. She says, you will be making an arrest very soon. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, okay, did you see who I'm going to arrest? Like, do you know who killed Julian? Because right. he's really, at this point, grasping at any, any right. straw he possibly can to get a lead on this case. So if, it, if, if Charity has said any name, he right. would have been knocking at their fucking door. <laughs> Absolutely. So funny. Yeah, he doesn't actually do work. He just needs a lead that someone else will give him. Yeah, and so... Uh, she's like, no, I didn't see who it was. I just saw you making the arrest. And I just know that it's somebody that when they get arrested, it's going to affect a lot of people we know. Yeah. Uh, that really is the extent of that. Later on, Miguel and, and Zombie Charity um, have a little conversation where they're basically making plans to make love and Miguel tells her that he, he's like, yeah, we can't exactly have sex here at the Bennett home and my home's destroyed <laughs> from the last time we tried to have sex. So I made a reservation at a hotel. So he made a reservation for them to have sex at a hotel. And um, I mean, like, where is this hotel? Does Harmony have hotels? I've only heard of the B&B. Yeah. I'm sure they have a hotel. Hotel Harmony. They'll just, yeah. Oh, okay. And well, you know. Oh no, you haven't seen it, so I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna spoil it for you. I'm not gonna spoil it for you. You right. haven't seen it. It's something that happens in later seasons, and there is a hotel, but it's sketchy as fuck. But, okay. Yeah. I, yeah. No. no. And, and it. Yeah. And if you. And I look if forward to it. Who's seen it? If you know, you know. I'm talking about the spike stuff there's and if you think about the hotel that will make you laugh if that's the hotel where can, where uh miguel and charity have their, their romance their like, first time together that would be it, it's a, it's just like a seedy motel that's 100 percent something miguel would do yeah <laughs> i set up a hotel it's like yeah he says he wants it to be a special night for them and she's like i i i know it will be as long as we're together um, at first when he was like, well, I don't know where we're going to go because we can't exactly have sex at the Bennett's and my house is destroyed. And she said to him, well, as long as we're together, I was like, oh my God, are they going to go do it in the woods? Like out there by that cave, like near charity. That would be beyond fuck up. And that would be right up zombie charities alley. I, yeah, I would be yeah. into it. I'm not even going to lie. I would love it if they did that. That would be odd. You know, I thought you meant like if you were them and I was like, really? No, you I would love to watch it. I would love to watch I know, it. No, I think that's show. hilarious. Well, she makes that joke where she's like, oh no, 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 no. That's from before when she says like over my dead body and she's like, it, it just reminds me of that. She's like, yeah. mm -hmm. mm, kinky. Yeah. Kinky, yeah. yeah she's kinky. She is. So anyway, Miguel also has a conversation with Kay where she tries to kind of give him a little clue into the fact that that's not charity she's just like don't you think charity's changed a little bit and he's like maybe a little bit but i don't care because she likes me again <laughs> right exactly that's what it is yeah because he absolutely has noticed and has been bothered by it yeah and then he tells her <laughs> then he told tells her you know thank you so much Kay, for being there for us during that really tough time you mean a lot to me and you always will. And that that's where we leave it with them. Meanwhile, we gotta say one last little thing about Timmy, bless his little heart. Timmy has been caught on tape. Um, Tabitha's watching TV. She's watching a, a show called, instead of cops, it's called Lawmen. Okay. Lawmen, Lawmen, I'm what so you gonna right do? Now. Yeah. Yeah, she's watching Lawmen and for some 
reason. They have this footage of a little tiny convenience store robbery. Yeah, the robbery of this little convenience store is yeah. national news. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so the the announcer is like, yes, the three three robbers were uh in connection with the robbery. Oh my god, I don't know that what that sentence was. But three? that like is it. You're like the robbers robbed it and they did it. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically what they wrote. Yeah. But three of the robbers were caught on the scene, but one escaped, but his he was caught on tape. And then they flash his face across the screen, and it is Timmy. And uh, now that's when Zombie Charity comes in. She sees it, and now she has a clue as to where Timmy is, which is right. bad news for Timmy. Because yes. me, at, at that exact moment, moment, Timmy is telling Toto, like, yeah, things are bad now. But they could be worse if Zombie knew where Timmy was, and then yeah. it pans over right. to a screens in a in a shop or something that shows the his face on the TV screen. So he doesn't know that he's been caught on tape by the lawmen. But yeah, it's 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 something's a brewing for him. So um, I think the I think this is. I have one thing, one last thing to say about what's going on over here. It's not really part of the magic plot. It's more of, it's more of the DNA John stuff, but it goes along with what what's going on here. So, um, I will quickly talk about it. Eve and David are talking, yeah, and he she tells him that she's feel she feels terrible about lying to Grace about John. Then you shouldn't have done it, dummy. Yeah. It's so stupid. And then they just recap the entire DNA plot. And then David then gives her some grief about lying. He's like, he's like, yeah, and we were ready to bring Ivy down, but then you lied. Why yeah. did you lie, Eve? It's like, you lied. Why did you do that? It's like, you. why did you do any of this crap? He's very frustrating. I don't like that character at all. I really hate him. And he could have told the truth at any moment. If the, he, if the truth was so important to, to you could be said to him so it's very yeah nice. um and of course she explains her reasons and we all know what that was so then uh <laughs> i do want to say this sam i want to talk about the call that sam got before he talked to charity about her premonition he gets a call like that is uh like his boss telling him you got to do something about this investigation what's going on ramp up this investigation find julian's murder and when he gets off the phone he tells Grace that the phone call was uh, his boss telling him, you know, he has to do more. And she says to him, but you've been working day and night. On what? Puzzles? What is right. that doing? Exactly. He literally just doesn't do anything. And he asks people, he's like, was a crime committed? And they're like, no. And he's like, great. <laughs> that's what he does. That, that's exactly what he does. Yeah. And she, uh, the fact that she's like, you've been working day and night. Like, does that, am I meant to believe yeah, that he, he goes to work. That, he, that he's he a great work. cop. We're supposed to think he's a great cop. We're not supposed to think ill of him. This lady, this lady hasn't seen him. I imagine, right? Like she, he goes to work and she doesn't see him, right? Like he's not at home working. He's off right. somewhere working, and he right. just doesn't come home. I imagine she's like, yeah, he's working day and night because Sam just hasn't come home. Yeah. But, in actuality he's just like at the police station playing minesweeper you remember yeah, and, and like on like yes and like he's like on chat rooms and stuff trying to solve crimes that way yeah, <laughs> yeah but he 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 gets he starts out like trying to solve the crime but he just gets like distracted by all the things you can get distracted by on the internet and now he has like a chat room of friends that he hangs out with he's like i gotta go brb guys i gotta go hang out with my family for a little bit but i'll be back for a quick second yeah ttyl grace is like an enabler she she would be a perfect one if she isn't in this situation she just makes she's like you're the perfect man and you're you're doing great that's perfect yeah. it just cracked me up because she was like you've been working day and night when i haven't seen that <laughs> you pause it. you're lying to me you're lying to oh. us as the audience and maybe he has been working day and night but he hasn't been working day and night on this murder investigation and also we've seen no evidence that that's true her telling us is the evidence i guess i guess um, also I want to, I, you know, since we had a little Simone, I'm going to talk about what Simone, her three lines that she got this week. Yeah. Um, she confronts her mother about the whole chat situation Yeah. and she is surprised to hear that Eve 
doesn't really have a problem with Chad anymore. She doesn't, and she doesn't question her about it, which I wouldn't either, honestly, because this is just like a win is a win mm -hmm. at this point. Yeah. But she's like, um, Simone's like, Mama, I gotta tell you, D uh, Chad's gonna be DJing here tonight, and I hope you can be okay with that. Eve's like, not a problem because yeah. Eve now knows that he's a good person. I think she says as much. She says Simone. Chad is a good person, yeah, specifically, which is nice. Yeah, and so Simone's glad to hear that, and she asks. Eve to talk to TC about Chad for her basically yeah. she's like well since you have now figured that out can you please try and get daddy to figure that out too uh, Eve's not going to do that so yeah. with that said it's time to talk about everybody's favorite storyline Sheridan and Louise y'all mm -hmm. this this titanic shit it's hard because you know like that it's not gonna work out in our favor with louise so it's like brian's it he's the one it's it that's it i have to accept brian it's so good and it's all so goofy yeah it is it's it, it, right you yeah they go on like a log and they're like who is this person and they like no one has pictures of like every person on the titanic if they do they've like spent years cultivating it in private like it's like i don't and the pictures they have of <laughs> people who were on the titanic are not pictures of them on the titanic it's just pictures of those people who right. they know were also on the titanic it's not like living not their life. photos right. of people dancing yeah. on the titanic right that they, someone would have been dancing with them to get that photo. It would have been another dancer that took yeah, it. Like maybe there's a like, maybe there's pictures of like the ballroom of people dancing yeah. in the ballroom, but yeah. a specific get like at that time the 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 camera technology was yeah. not such that you just like walk around snapping photos forever for them to develop, right? So you had to like you had to like sit it. there a long time. Yeah, everyone's eyes are all weird, like because they yeah. blink. And but, that's why, like, a lot of times in pictures, people, most people in those old pictures, a lot of people aren't smiling because they had yeah, to just they sit couldn't. there. Yeah, they had to just sit there. Yeah. yeah. And also, um, no one would have taken pictures of below deck dance parties. Like, it's like, what? <laughs> okay. But, you know, it was in the movie. So that's why it's in this. That's why it makes sense. Ciao. Okay. So let's talk about... I took terrible notes. I'm going to go ahead and put that out there right now. On I okay. took terrible I'll notes on this. My first note is both couples search the Titanic site for info. Yeah. And that's exactly what's happening. Beth and Beth and Louise are in harmony on the Titanic site looking for Sheridan's past life of Susan and looking through information. And Antonio or Brian, whatever you want to call him, Brian and Diana are in Bermuda doing the same thing. So let's talk about what Diana finds first. Let's talk about Diana and the people in Bermuda and what's going on here. So they uh, want to go meet their former lives son. They found out, reminder for everybody who may not remember, they found out that in a past life, the two of them were married. She was Susan. He was Frank, Frank Leva, Frank. Franklin Leva, I guess was his name. Um, and they had four kids, one of which was listed as still alive on this ridiculous website. And uh, they decide at this point, they decide to go meet their quote, meet their baby. Let's go meet our baby. This 90 year old man. <laughs> Can you imagine if they had made it in time and he saw them, he would have like, that would have killed him. I Okay, so we watched this episode on a watch party, which is part of the reason my notes are bad. We watched this episode on a watch party, and that is one of the things I said. I was like, if he wasn't dead already, if he had seen his mother and father in the fucking flesh in young form, it's like children, it would have yeah. killed him. Basically, I mean, young adults. Yeah, it would have killed him. And, and it also just, like, it's so upsetting. I guess maybe actually... I guess that could be cool. You're like about to die and you're like, what is reality? And I everything would assume I am dying. My thing was- You would have thought that that was like the ghost of your parents. No, you're right. You would think that your ghost parents were back. But for some reason in current clothing. Like, right. And like, like they're flesh and blood and they just look a lot better than you and they're real. My ghost parents went shopping for some reason before they came to come pick me up to take me to heaven. 
yeah. and they have on clothes from 2002. But yeah, I'm I, him, yeah, I'm picturing him like questioning this out loud, and it's hilarious. Yeah, it would be cra- it, it would be a crazy experience. I do agree. Like it would be really interesting. Like right. once you, if you got once you got over the initial shock, if it didn't kill him because he was already on the brink of death. If it if the initial shock didn't kill him, it would be yeah. an interesting, cool thing to happen. Yeah, you know. I just don't think they even thought of it though. I think they were like, "Let's go see him," and they didn't think of that at all. Like they no. didn't be weird for him. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like, what were you going to say when you what got did they there? Think was going to happen? Yeah, they deny that they are these people. Like they, so I think they would have denied it to this kid too. Man, this old man, this not a kid. old ass <laughs> man. So they right. say, "Let's go meet our baby." This who is ninety something years old at this point, probably. Yeah. So they get there, um, and to this like uh, address that they found on this website again, ridiculous website. <laughs> um, they get to the address, they realize, oh, it's a church, it's a parish, and not only is it a parish, their son was the priest or is the priest of this parish, right? Right. So <laughs> the groundskeepers comes the groundskeeper comes around and sees them and they ask after like where is 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 frank here we're looking for somebody named frank he's like yeah father frank this is so weird how he reacts to this he's right yeah he's (laughs) like i'm sorry to tell you father frank passed away a few days ago diana is devastated i mean laid low yeah over a an old man she's never met Yes, and from she's a calling him life. her baby, baby, as if it's her kid. Yeah, and so <laughs> then she, she, they, the the groundskeeper takes them to Frank's like burial site. It's right there in uh, in the parish, and uh, it, you can see like the fresh mound of dirt. Like he just, they just put him in the ground. <laughs> yeah. They you missed mean- him by a few days, yes. and um, so Father Frank takes them over there they they're like my heart is breaking for our son i think i think they keep uh, saying that they keep Antonio, brian says that first he's like my heart is breaking for our son okay he, right, he lived a good long life yeah why are you why is your yeah why is your heart breaking you know i think sheridan just loves being brokenhearted and i think that he <laughs> just would go along with it because it makes her complacent and weird but yeah. like she loves to have something that's like weighing on her heavily. Mm, she does. She, and, <laughs> I mean, it, she has enough weight. She has enough. She has a lot of her down. You haven't, yeah, absolutely. Without taking this on, but he took so, more than this child. Yeah, it was just so ridiculous. They acted like they really had lost a child. Like they had had babies together. Yes. The- yeah. Y'all haven't even had sex yet. I didn't realize that. That's hilarious it's like oh this is it was just so weird so um father Fra- um the groundskeeper tells them that father frank's uh final words were about his mother and that his he oh. had a great relationship with his family he loved his mother and his father and um he leaves them to kind of have some time with the body <laughs> the body uh, <laughs> at the site <laughs> and diana leans down oh my god y'all Again, we watch this. On, we watch this on the on the watch party, and this is why y'all need to join the the Patreon. I want to do that. I, I keep thinking I want to do that, and I'm and going. come to a watch party because this was so funny. We were cry. I was crying tears. Right. We were crying. It was so funny. So yeah, she absurdity. leans down, touches the tombstone, and it glows bright like yellow. It glows. And yeah. then she is like transported into like this trance and she is in, it's like in black and white. Yeah. She's in this courtyard where they already are. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then a little boy runs up to her and says, well, yeah, he runs in. He says, mother, it's me, your son. And then he runs, races into her arms. She's scoops him up she you know swings him around she's oh my god my son and then (laughs) the son turns into an old man in her arms and then she steps back 
and he's just this old man. And at first, I couldn't tell who it was because the picture was grainy. But it is the actor who plays Brian in Prosthesis. Like, are you serious? I thought that was a real old man. That's so. No, of course it was. Of they course. had the actor who played Brian. That must have been way more expensive than like paying a random. Like, it's like really you spent like hours on makeup for that. Okay. Ah, it was hilarious. It was worth every fucking penny. Ah, I loved it i it was i i mean i hated it but How i don't mind that i didn't catch that though i thought it was an old dude it was because the picture was really grainy actually yeah the that YouTube is the version i we actually ended up watching because sometimes on the watch party we'll watch on youtube if the if the picture's okay but we actually ended up watching one from my own personal stash because mine had better quality sometimes right. the quality is the same so it doesn't yeah. matter but yeah. mine had better quality, so I was actually able to see that it was him. But the one on YouTube, well, I remember the one on YouTube was very bad. Yeah. And so it makes sense that you wouldn't realize that's who but it I was. was. Like, again, pretending to be this guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah. And she's pretty good. Like, it, she's so warm to him. It wouldn't make sense if she all of a sudden was horrified. And she kind of is for a split second. But then she loves him like her son. And Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, he turns into it turns into Brian in in old man makeup, and uh, she has like a little conversation with him. I did not write it down again. I was watching it on watch party, so I didn't take the best notes. Yeah, she he, he like basically tells her they were happy in life. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so she comes, huh? That they'll be together again. He's like, don't be sad. Like every like we're all. Yeah. I, yeah. Which I, this might be a little tangent, but as far as reincarnation goes, how does that work in this world? Because yeah. if his parents have passed on, but they're Sheridan and Antonio are their like new lives, the old them now is not in heaven or anything. It's like they are this, it, they're here. I guess yeah so if they have another life then they still won't ever meet up with their son again unless he has another life well yeah and and it's kind of implied that he doesn't like i mean he's like a ghost so it's like but i guess they are in memories no they aren't no nope, that's memories but maybe once they have kids he'll come back as one of their kids maybe. i don't know i don't know how it works but you're right it doesn't but i'm not surprised that they didn't do the whole time travel like reincarnation thing correctly but yeah of course of course they wouldn't figure that out is they <laughs> please they think? can barely get they can barely get like the basics of like divorce <laughs> law <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Like, yep we're just so, anything they can do we're like good job passions you almost did it yeah so after um that whole scene that whole thing sheridan or diana snaps out of it and she explains what happened and yeah. of course and to or brian's like fully on board he's like that's amazing of course whenever it suits him whenever yeah. it's uh it, it is uh beneficial to him her visions her her trances they're, yeah. they're normal and perfectly fine that's so true but the minute she's like oh i was in a pool in harmony and i was with my love he's like you're crazy yeah he's like we're not together <laughs> that didn't happen <laughs> yeah. yeah that's right yeah. yeah but she comes out of it and he's perfectly okay with it he's like oh that's amazing of course this is so incredible we're having such a and he's and it's true he's right they are having this yeah, incredible cool. experience it's spiritual thing. yeah it's cool if it was yeah yeah and so then they go to Father Frank's office, their son's office, yeah. and they have a look see around. Um, the, they look at the pictures, they find pictures of themselves, basically, right? The groundskeeper says something in passing to them about them having an uncanny resemblance to Frank's parents, and they yeah. just kind of play it off. Yeah. Um, and then randomly, which, but I loved, I appreciate it. Uh, Brian gives Pilar a call. In yeah, Harmony, he calls Pilar because it's that's his birthday. Magic, kind of, yeah. He's touched by the love, the family love. I think that's something that someone says. I think someone says something like, "Family is really important. It's everything, isn't it?" And he's like, "Yeah." And then does let that. me call my mom. Yeah, yeah. I guess. Okay, he guilt he got guilted into a phone call. Good. Yeah, but he, what was weird to me is that 
He called her on a pay phone using a phone card, but he has a cell phone. <laughs> he didn't want her to be able to like know him too well. He was like, I don't want you to be able to get in touch with me. <laughs> I just thought that was the oddest thing. He called her on a pay phone using a phone card. The phone card was such a blast from the past. I haven't thought about yeah. a phone card in so yeah. long. Yep. But um, anyway, he he didn't. Ha- he only had like five seconds on the damn things. Right. <laughs> they weren't able to have much of a conversation. But she is. I was so happy for Pilar in this moment. Yeah, yeah, because that's I, that's really what she wanted. It's great, and also, yeah. yeah, yes. She she gets like overwhelmed with emotion when she hears his voice. She's so, and I was so glad because so he's called her a couple of other times, and they like get disconnected. Something happens. I was so glad we finally got the two of them having a conversation. Yep. Yeah. And so she's like overwhelmed with emotion and he tells her about Diana and then she, she's like, oh, by the way, son, Louise told me you were here the night Julian was murdered. You wouldn't know anything about that, would you? And he deflects. He's like, what is it, mama? I can't hear you. You're breaking up. You can't, you're breaking up. And she knows exactly what he's doing. She's like, no, no, it's fine. I shouldn't have asked about it. And so, and so then he's like, oh, okay. I can hear you now. (laughs) Um, and so she backs off, but then they get cut off because he doesn't have enough time on his phone card, right? His phone card, which he should have just called her on his cell phone, but he did not. He was dead. Um, and so he doesn't have enough time on his phone call card, and apparent I wrote also apparently it's his birthday because she tells him happy birthday. Um, then we while he's on the phone, we see that sketchy random man from like last week. Um, he shows up and he calls someone and says, I, I, I found O'Leary and you can have your revenge. You can get your sweet revenge right now. And he pulls out a gun and aims it for both, uh, Brian and Diana. He's like, I'm, I can kill them both. Yeah. I think he's supposed to kill her. So he's like sad, but then he's like, I'll just kill them both. Oh, okay. Okay. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't really make sense. And then when the other guy steps into the I was like why did that matter like why does he care that this older guy showed up like I don't know he should have just I don't know it reminds me very much of like uh Paris it reminds me of the whole like Mm -hmm. I've got her I'll shoot her now no I absolutely was having like flashbacks to Paris when I was like man Sheridan really cannot get away from these like assassins. Yeah, and they all are like, she's very beautiful. Like he said something, and I was like, great, here we go again. It's gonna mm-hmm. be like that. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it won't be. Mm-hmm. No, I think you're absolutely right. I'm sure it won't be because said- he does. He did make several comments last week and this week about how gorgeous she is, how beautiful she is. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, of course, they they don't know that he's there sh- pointing a gun at them, even though he's not really hidden. <laughs> No, he's the only other person there and he's not hidden and he's in a weird like suit. He looks like he's from like Miami Vice. Like he's like wearing a Miami Vice outfit. And it's like, yeah, you would feel him. Even if you didn't see him, you'd be like, there's a human over here. I <laughs> yeah. sense a presence. You would. I sense your aura. Really? Yeah. Um, so they something happens where Diana finds out that it's Brian's birthday and she's like, What? It's your birthday? Why didn't you tell me? And they go out of like shooting range of him. Like they go out of his like sight basically. Yeah. And Diana's like, let's go celebrate your birthday basically. So he doesn't get a chance to shoot them. Now let's talk about what's going on with Beth and Louise. Cause that's pretty much what happened in um, Bermuda. So Beth and Louise are also on this website. And Louise is weirdly excited about, this i didn't get like sh- with with uh franklin not franklin god so many fucking names <laughs> <laughs> antonio has officially has three names diane Sh- sheridan officially has three names that's a lot louise still only has he has the two but um yeah it's a lot and i'm trying i'm using them interchange interchangeably so anyway he's so weirdly excited oh. about this i thought it was the wrong awesome. person like, it's like, know your audience, Louise. Like, you're talking to a woman who wants to date you. <laughs> and uh, uh, he's talking to a woman whom he is actively dating. Right. And the, and is <laughs> telling her, like, they're, like, in it to win it. And he's like, all I need to do is get this off the table. But it seems, like, fanatical. And it's like, 
really? Does that feel like he's about to move closer to you if you do this? What drives me crazy about it is, is like, well, you're already like mourning Sheridan's death and you're saying that you need to get past shit, like Sheridan's yeah. death and move past that. Why are you digging up another dead Sheridan? Right. <laughs> and he says his reasoning, and this makes no sense. He says, I just know that if I knew that in the past she had had a happy life, that then she's happy now. And it's I like, wrote that oh. down. I was like, what? How? How does that work? Oh, she, okay. Uh, as far as you know, she's dead. So what do you mean she's happy now? Right. He, yeah, exactly. Beth. Beth is, yeah. She's I, on board, though. She's so Beth crazy. Is, she's she, out so much. She will do anything to be, to suck his dick. She will do anything to right. have his balls on her forehead. Do you hear me? Like, <laughs> she... <laughs> She oh, you're like, right. It's that's a vibe. And then only, and then sometimes they'll say something and she'll be like, what? And he'll be like, never mind. And then like, <laughs> again, she's like feeding that fire. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. She just, she wants that so badly that she will put up with absolutely anything. And that's why she eventually descends to the descent that she goes to, to the lows yeah. that she goes to. Cause she just will do anything for this. Um, so Beth does give Luis a little talking to because they are like super into this. And I want to I want to remind everybody looking into this Titanic stuff on the website was Beth's idea. She initiated this. I think she wanted to get closer to him. Like she yeah. wanted. Yeah. She didn't think of it as a threat. Yeah, She doesn't. She doesn't think of it as a threat at all. Right. Um, but I would. <laughs> I don't know if I were her friend, which she seems to have none, I would caution her about like indulging him in this. Totally. Cause you then know? you're like part of him and Sheridan. It's not you. It's you're helping him and Sheridan. Yeah. Yeah. And that's exactly what's happening. Yeah. So she gives him a little talk about how she wants them to build a life together and she wants them to start over but she doesn't know if that's what he really wants. She's like, you say that's what you want, but your actions are kind of telling me a different thing. Cause he's so, ex he is so excited. I don't think she oh, thought he would be so excited to just see that right. picture yeah. of yeah. Sheridan. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I don't know if I said it, but they saw pictures of uh, Sheridan as Susan on the boat and they saw a picture of him as Liam on the boat and he saw they saw a picture of them together right and so he's like super excited about this yeah um and she, it I think she didn't anticipate I don't think she even thought they would find anything honestly yeah, maybe that's why she initiated it because she thought she could really lay it to rest yes. and then they found these like giant bombshells yeah yep yeah uh so she asked him, is this really what you want? Do you really want to start over? You say you do, but your actions are telling me something else. And he says, no, I do. I really want to, I do want to be with you, but I just can't turn my back on Sheridan's memory. This is not Sheridan's memory. This, this is literally so another woman. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's, yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, and so they look through the website. They find the kids just like Antonio and Sheridan did. They find the kids. Luis, again, is so weirdly excited to find, to see that Frank Le Leva Jr. is still alive. He's yeah. like, I got to call him and see if Sheridan was happy and hit her life with the, with his father. I can't roll my eyes enough sometimes. <laughs> so I guess the phone number and the address was on the website. Yeah. He could call him right then. <laughs> he goes, he calls. Uh, it's, uh, I don't care about this, but it's busy because <laughs> <laughs> it's busy because, um, Sheridan and Luis, I mean, Sh Jesus Christ, Sheridan and Antonio are also <laughs> like on the phone with somebody else who had been calling for Frank. Right. And they make it seem like they connect, but it was a miss thing. Yeah. It was random on the phone with Sheridan. And then he finally gets, some, he does get someone on the, on the phone and uh, it's the groundskeeper and the groundskeeper informs him that Frank is dead. Yeah. And then he's like, but he has some relatives who are visiting. And so he's like, I don't know, maybe you can talk to them. And then he, and, but then, <laughs> but then he himself is like, actually, I don't think they could be very helpful to you. They said they only knew him distantly. It's like, why did you bring it up? Yeah, it's so. <laughs> I thought that too. Why 
why did you even bring it up? So anyway, stupid, stupid, stupid. I wish I hadn't even I talked about it. I think that you could feel Luis being like, really? And he was like, actually, never mind. I don't want to be part of this. <laughs> You're way too fucking excited. <laughs> oh, meanwhile, um, uh, Beth, while he's on the phone, Beth is like still clicking through this website. And she, of course, finds the picture of Antonio as Franklin Leva Jr. And she immediately is like, I can't tell Luis about this. It would kill him. Wouldn't you, if you're Beth, if you're Beth with Beth's brain, wouldn't you be like your brother steals her in every lifetime? You're never going to be together. You're, she's like with your brother. Like, wouldn't you tell him? He also, we also believe she's dead. So what does it matter? Yeah. That's, that's my thing. Yeah. And, but she's like, oh, it'll kill him to know that Antonio was the one that she ended up with in her past life. Maybe it would. Well, every actually life, it would every because- life. It's always the same person. So he, if he knew it was that in Titanic, you'd know it was that every time. And yeah. So, well, and he <laughs> does say I was about to kind of get on her case, but she, he does basically, um, he does basically verify this later by saying, you know, if I knew the guy who Sheridan ended up with, I don't think I could be friends with him. Like he does say that at one point, yeah. for no reason. Yeah. Yes. Um, Hank shows up, Hank shows up and is like the only person making any sense, which anytime Hank's in the scene and he's the only person making sense, you know, we've gone too far. Yeah. <laughs> we've taken things a bit too far. Right. He shows up. Beth brings him up to speed. Louis he's on board on too. He, he's weird. He's like, okay. Well, yeah. I yeah. Yeah. But then he, he, so Beth shows him the picture of, um, Luis and Sheridan shows him the picture of, uh, Antonio in the past life. He, she shows him all of those things. Right. Yeah. And Hank and Hank's like, so what? And I agree. Yeah, absolutely. Hank's like, we want him to start living this life. Why right. are y'all digging into a past life? And also Sheridan is dead. Why are y'all still doing anything with this? Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the what she does with the folder is so weird. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. She's like, he at least deserves the opportunity. If you were given a folder and told that this huge secret was inside it, it doesn't matter if you've moved forward. Like she's like, if he really has moved forward, he won't look in the folder to see this information. Is that what she said? Yes. And it's I'm like so exasperated she, by this point. Yeah. Because it's like, and she's like, she's like, you know what? Well, now we'll know if he's really moved on. It's like he clearly hasn't. And he's gonna look in the folder. And I feel you must know that. You have to. Yeah. So she prints out the picture and puts it in a folder. And I thought, because I what I wrote in my notes. At first, uh, Beth says she doesn't want to keep things from Louise and, yeah. because she wants their relationship to be based on honesty. Okay, ding, ding, ding. Yes, good girl. Yeah. But then later, Louise leaves to go talk to his mama and um, he they have a conversation about Antonio. He's just annoyed with Antonio. Yeah. What else is new? Um, and uh, when Beth shows up, she she and Hank go over to like talk to Louise. And I guess she said what you just said, that if he opens the folder that he. Yeah, they don't. don't say that to Luis. They say it together when he's like, I don't think you should show him that. And she's like, I think he has a right to at least have the opportunity to make that decision for himself or something. Mm-hmm. So it's like, she doesn't say that with Luis there. I don't know if that's important to- Right, right. No, no, that is important. She doesn't say it with Luis there, but that, but the part that I'm missing or that I missed is that yeah. she like put the picture in a folder and was like going to like test Luis with it. I don't even know if it, she thought of it as a test. It was more like she thought she was giving him both opportunities to either turn away or to open it. But it's like very clearly this man is obsessed and he's going to open this folder that you're going to give him. I Even if I wasn't obsessed, I would have to open it. I would just be like, I would want to open it. I don't yeah. know. Well, okay. So that, that happens. Beth has the picture. She's on her way. That's kind of where we leave it with them. I do want to say that Luis tells Pilar all about all of this and how they found all these pictures that look exactly like them. And Pilar yucks his yum so goddamn hard. She was like, the church doesn't believe in reincarnation. Boo. Yeah. Boo. 
Yeah. Lar. I need to get a boo button. Yeah, definitely. I'm gonna need to write these down. I need to get a sure, boo button. Yeah, yeah. How many buttons do you have like limitless possibilities of what you can have? I have, I can, let's see, there's five pages and there's six per page. So I can do a total of 30. Okay. And I have, I have like a, like the ones that like were built in, which is like, you know, um, and like the crickets and like the right. clapping or whatever. But then it also has slots for like where I can put in my own ones and I can replace any of them if I the want. The boo to. is definitely, yeah. Yeah, I got to get a boo button. I have to get a boo button. Boo! Because when she was like, the church doesn't believe in reincarnation. But she uh, believes in so many crazy things. Like, why wouldn't she be entertaining this? I don't know. Yeah. She's good. Pilar was barely in these episodes and she still irritated me. <laughs> yeah, she was, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Just, honestly, just that portion of it. The rest of it was okay. I, I and also I was very glad to see her finally get to talk to Antonio. I really was, and she did yeah. a great job. The actress did a great job of like that emotion, showing the emotion of like she had just been it. You could see her, her breathe. Yeah, you saw her breathe for, for yeah. what felt like the first time. You know. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So anyway, that's all I have for today. You got anything to add? I really don't. I can't. Make her. I don't. I um, we all was said. It was. We said it all. So that's the whole episode. Uh, Jessica, where can people find you online? I have a uh, Instagram Fair Folk Trade, um, and then a website fairfolktrade.com. If you if you're into fantasy stuff, I sell antique fantasy stuff. All right. I'll link that in the description for sure. I didn't know you had the website, so I'll add that in um, this time. Right. And as for me, y'all know where to find me. If you want to find me, you know where to look. And with that, <laughs> you are my passion for life.